Okay, uh, Gold Winger, this is where the rubber meets the road. I'm down to the point where I had to take the uh, the crank bolt out. It's a 19 millimeter again. I caught hell trying to get it out with a ratchet and a 19 millimeter socket. And I had trouble with the pulleys wanting to move. Even though they're all in sync, it wouldn't make no difference if they move. But I didn't want to move them too much. So what I had to do, I had to go back and go down in my shed and search for my impact wrench that I hadn't used and who knows when I was glad that it worked. So you use an impact wrench on it and what it would do, it'll the vibration of it would make, just make it break loose whatever is holding it and it'll keep everything else in uh, still while all the concentration is on that bolt. And it did break it loose and I'm going to show you exactly what's uh, in here. Or how long the bolt is so if you do have some things that haven't thrown it away just hold on to it again so that's what uh, is behind the uh, the bolt the bolt is gosh um, I say about two three inches long and uh, these two washers I guess one compresses one compresses against the other to have kind of help uh, keep the belt on. So that's why this is kind of like concave a little bit. So make sure you keep these together. Now what I did too is that I went and I took my the pulley Again, you can see how smooth of a good configuration that 12 millimeter bolt is, but the bolt is not long enough. All right, I went down to Lowe's and I brought a 12 millimeter bolt. It's the right size, but it's too long. And then also to the thread pattern is right, not right. So, sorry about that, I'm trying to do two things at one time. So what you got to do, you have to go down to Lowe's, take your bolt with you, match up the bolt pattern, so you have the right bolt pattern. Now also too, before you go, stick something in the hole like I have my bamboo stick, I got Max on it. Just stick it in the hole along with that, uh, let me do it the right way. Stick that in the hole. And you get an idea of how long of a bolt you can get. So you can kind of see what the mark is. So I have to get a bolt, either that to the max or just a little bit shorter. So you notice I got max on there. So max is the point of how far this bolt is how long the, the bolt can go in there. So, just imagine, I've got to get a bolt that's about that long. Look at the mags and see what the tip of it is. So that bolt has got to be, that much has got to be cut off with the right thread pattern. All right, folks, um, I'm back off to uh, Lowe's, but I didn't have the right thread pattern. So I'm gonna go back there and see if they got a uh, the right thread pattern to match this one. Don't lose that bolt because like I said that's the one that goes for the crank. Alright, be back here in a minute. Well after I got the bolt out I took the original bolt down to this place uh, here in uh, Grafton, Virginia, either Yorktown. Um, they sell all different types of bolts and nuts and they had exactly what is needed for this type of conversion. Um, I told them to match the thread up with a longer bolt and they did that and what they did is that uh, I told them I had to have this much before it bottom out inside the engine block so look at here the guy went there and look I still got that much left over which made it ideal so the same thing I'm glad that uh, 
the guy had everything that I needed and this is the I brought two of them so someone needs it I'm willing to mail it to you if you want it if you're catching a hard time trying to get one now also too notice I don't have a washer on here uh, so I can still put a washer on there to kind of help uh, maybe a lock washer and a flat washer on there so that uh, that would give me a little bit more extra room of instead of it bottoming out I still have the original washer and the and the belt guard that goes on the front like that right here and that still goes on there so that gives me a little bit more room also told while I was down there I was thinking about you know when we get ready to do the radiator this guy even so this little uh, connecting piece and I told him it was a six millimeter bolt and it took a I mean a, a six millimeter nut that went on it and this guy said okay let me see I think we might have one in there he didn't have one any longer than this so I think this is about uh, inch and a half maybe and and they had the little studs that go on with it as well I don't screw that one in there too tight but now I got it kicked out about this far so I bought two of those so I'm hoping that that's enough to give me enough space out for the radiator again good lucky find today so I'm in the process now I'm just gonna wind up and uh, put the the pulley on there but I'm not gonna tighten it down because I got to do the covers I got to grind those out so that the the pulley here it can go around the pulley so so far so good hanging there we're getting there now I'm at this phase where I need to make the groove in for the cover here on the right side now what I did I just pushed it on and just stuck it on but you can kind of tell if you're at the exact spot if it's flush here then you're actually right in the groove for it because it's flush down at the bottom as well now take a look at this illusion of it here I'm trying to look around it so I'm gonna take the pulley I'm gonna take the pulley and I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at and as I look at it from this angle here I say about right there it's the upper part of this piece here that comes out I'm just gonna cut this whole entire little ring out right here I'm just gonna cut that out into a circle but I might not go all the way out to here because I don't think it it needs to go all the way out to there but I'm gonna start and just give it a bit of a circle here and then I'm gonna take the other one see how much it comes in on the other side here and do the same now also too what I'm gonna have to wind up and look at too look how much distance it is between here between here and the pulley so that means I'm gonna have to put some extra washers in there which give me that extra space of bolt length going inside the the crank so that's gonna work out good so I give it a couple of washers a few washers anyway or either a space I might find a space or somewhere that might bring it out about that far and that would work fine alright so that's where I'm at right now uh, grinding that down and uh, trying to get the left and the right cover to fit right it may be a little while so I might not do too much again for today so I might be going on day three uh, and also too under normal circumstances if I didn't wasn't making a video I probably could do this in a half a day so stay tuned we are really on the back side getting ready to go the other way into the closing hang in there well after taking both of the covers off and I've taken the rubber gasket off them 
I was trying to figure how am I going to draw the circle on it if one is higher than the other. Uh, so what I did, I uh, looked for the the 19 millimeter socket and dang if that wasn't the exact circumference of that uh, pulley uh, extension on it. So there's my uh, what to call the thing when you got something that you can use to make an imprint on it. Well that's what I'm going to use for the imprint. And then I'm going to go inside the circumference of this 19 millimeter bolt, I mean socket. And then I'm going to work my way out at that test it, pull it, take it off, test it, and take it off. So think about using that. And here's my beginning drawing where I'm going to stay on the inside of the, the drawing or the circle. And I'm going to do a couple of tests because I don't want to make it too big. And I want to make sure that it do have some some air space in between there. But not too much air space because I don't want water to get in there. Alright. Okay, Gold Wingers. Uh, here I went down in my shed. And I, after I drew the circle, I took a hacksaw and got as close to the inner limit of the ring that I made and then I took my bench grinder I didn't take my Harbor Freight uh, metal grinder and I just did a circumference around it and it looks a whole lot better by doing it like that it looks more professional looks great I'm gonna flip it over and give you another view of how it looks on the other side now after I put it on the bike and it looked like it needs to have a little bit more room I just shave it down again with the bench grinder with the stone on the end of it and give it a little bit more space. Let's see what the other side looks like. Now this is what it looks like on the face side. Again, I say don't have the rubber insulation in between there, but uh, at least the hole isn't too big, not too small, but I'm going to try it on the bike and see what it looks like. Um, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. Don't try to make it so ragged looking. Just make it look like so it looks satisfactory so that it doesn't look like crap. All right. Well, go Wingers, that's the look that you want to have. I wanted to video this to kind of show you that, uh, see that little bit of a gap it got in between here? And that part of the piece of the pulley that's sticking out is right in between the two uh, timing belt covers and they're not touching and not rubbing. All right, so now I'm going to have to just find a spacer on the inside so it can take up that gap so I can get that gap right there. Okay, we're back again. Uh, yesterday, after we finished out uh, yesterday, I noticed that uh, I needed something to do a spacer to push the pulley uh, away from the timing belt covers. I was going to get uh, a spacer, but a spacer was just too narrow. I needed something wide uh, that would uh, give it more surface pressure to the pulley crank so it wouldn't have any wobble to it. So what I did, I went down to Lowe's and I got these Hillman. I can't, uh, you can't see it. You'll see it on, on Lowe's site or either Hillman. It is a M12, which is a 12 millimeter, times 37 millimeters. That means that the circumference, and this is the actual uh, washers I've got, and I've got the sharpie here to just to kind of use it as a scale, so you know uh, just how wide it is. Uh, this inner portion is 12 millimeters. The width is from here to here, which is 37. And uh, what they did, they worked very well. They gave me that wide, spread out pounds per square inch uh, surface pressure to the crank pulley with the uh, pulley pulling into it. Um, I've been testing it. And what I did here, I put the covers on, took the covers off. And this is what I've got. Uh, here is the pulley with the extension off the pulley. This is that original uh, washer that was just on this plate here alone. And here's one of those Hillman uh, 1237 washers. I 
tried two, two was too many. I broke it, brought it back, got it down to one, and then plus the uh, the crank uh, guard itself. So the same thing. If you get this same type of pulley, one Hillman washer, the original washer, and then the pulley. Now also too, I don't have this. Just got it on hand tight. With this bolt here, you don't want to just run it straight into this pulley. So what I did, I went and got a lock washer. It's a 12 millimeter lock washer. Same thing, you can get them at Lowe's. And what it will do, it will just put compression on that and it'll grab onto the bolt and the, the pull itself so it won't bag off. And that's what to, along with the, uh, the blue Loctite, it should stay in place. Now after I kind of got a little tired and after I finished doing what I did yesterday, I had a little time on my hand. I took my uh, timing belt covers, took them down there to my shed, and I brushed them off with the, uh, the bench grinder with the brush wheel and just got all that crud off it. And, uh, and I was going to wind up and scrub them and try to make them all pretty and shiny, but I said, uh, forget that, I've done that too many times. I just went on and just did a primer and then a super mini coats of gloss black. And I think that's going to look real great. I'm going to show you how it looks when I put it on there to just as I get ready to test that pulley with the, the belt. There's one thing you got to remember now uh, with this pulley. I'm trying to figure on the left side, you've got to wind up and cut this off. Just don't cut too much, just cut just enough to the edge of it. Um, and then after that, you still have that overlap. Now, also do while I'm here too, you can kind of see I use some Permatex. This is the former gastic gasket. Uh, it is slow drying, non hardening. And what I did. I took a little bit and I just right along the edge without the gasket on there just along the edge because the gasket has got a little bit of a cup in it so after I went all the way around it I just placed it on there and just smoothed it on there I'm not gonna put any of here that goes on to the to the bike itself because if I ever had to take it off I don't want to have to pry it off so it'll still come off easy here. Again, not too much, just enough so that uh, when you see it. And what I did, I turned it over just like that, and I'm letting it just stiffen up a little bit before I get ready to do it. I did both ends just like that, the left and the right side. This will help uh, keep the gasket from being half on, half off when you get ready to put the uh, the covers back on. So a little bit of former gasket non-hardening uh, would do the trick. Okay Gold Wingers, here are the the timing belt covers back on. I did put the screws in them but I just hand tightened them. Um, I didn't, I loosened up this bolt here so I can kind of spin it freely kind of see if I hear any noise of anything that might have been touching or rubbing. Don't hear nothing so I guess I got a good distance I mean for the cutout for the covers but I'm looking at one thing that I might have to wind up and recheck again is that clearance on that uh, on the pulley to the covers so I'll take a look at that again but now I'm in the point where either I can try to fit the radiator in there to kind of see how much distance I have or either I should start with the uh, the pulley to try to put the alternator on there. I think I'll start going with the the alternator because I want to get that uh, bracket welded and made so I can get that portion of the uh, video out of the way. I want to add this little bit of a clip in here. Uh, you know when I installed the, the pulley here just in a practice run and I tightened it as tight as I could till that washer got collapsed 
but I'm looking at that distance there and I'm deciding whether should I put another washer you know that 1237 millimeter washer uh, I'm trying to think should I put another washer behind it but then I was thinking with the lock washer and then when I add the lock tight um, that should hold that in place without it uh, going any further in because it's all metal against metal and once it tightens down and the lock tight is in there I shouldn't have any problem with it but if I don't I guess I have to take it all apart and put another washer in there 